say, this is my Bible. I am what it says that I am. I can do what it says I can do. I'm a believer, not a doubter. I'm a doer, not just a hearer of God's word. My life is the better. After having heard the word of faith, my faith comes by hearing and hearing by the precious word of God. Now, if you believe that, give God another praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And just for a moment, raise your hands in the air and just worship him for a few more moments. He is awesome. He's magnificent. There is none like our Lord. Oh, we worship you, Lord, for your magnificence. We worship you, Lord, because you are the epitome of excellence in Jesus' name. So, Father, we sing or say hallelujah, hallelujah, and give you the ultimate praise because we're learning even more so every day who you are and what you are in our lives. So we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, while living and walking in the spirit, I've noticed that there is a demand or mandate from God for intensified worship. We should be developing a desire to maximize our worship experience. To worship effectively, we must raise our level of commitment. When done, it will move us into new levels of worship and increase our ability to hear God's word, hallelujah, or his voice. It takes discipline, a renewed commitment to God, and walking by faith to enter into the graduating class of worshipers. In my talking with people who, from the ministry who, who have been missing for a while, or we all been missing for a while, but as I've talked to them, I've noticed something in their conversation. Very seldom is anything said about worship. Very seldom is anything said about praising God. Sure, they're, they're grabbing and trying to get a revelation of God's word to get them through whatever they're dealing with in Jesus' name. But now, the element of worship has been lacking. And if you live and walk in the spirit of God, over a process of time, God nudges you and tells you and ministers to you about the fact, I need you to worship my name. I need you to give me all the glory. I need you to give me all the praise. You know, and I found out that the more I worship the Lord, the smaller my issues get until they actually dissipate because God becomes so huge in my life. And so now, with that, with that being said, I want you to turn your Bibles, and we're going to start this thing out by going to John chapter 4, verse 19. John chapter 4, verse 19. And so now, let me set it up for you. A woman goes to the well to get some water, and Jesus is sitting there, and uh, uh, she starts to talk to him, uh, finds out that he... <laughs> that he's more than what, he's, than, 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 than what he portrayed, uh, not what he portrayed, but what he looked like sitting at the well. She finds out that he is a prophet of God. He's read her mail, and uh, uh, I wanna go on from there. The Bible says in John chapter four, verse 19, the woman, the woman said to him, I perceive that you are a prophet. After she had read, he had read her mail, uh, our fathers worship in this mountain, and you Jews say, that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Stay right there for a moment. Hallelujah. In Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Hallelujah. Go to the next verse. <clears throat> you worship what you do not know. And Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. Next verse. Hallelujah. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Now, the reason why Jesus talked to her like that, now he did that with all love. He wasn't harsh with her. He wasn't upset at her for any reason. She was a Samaritan. He was Jewish. The Samaritan and Jews never got along up to this point. But God, through his son Jesus, was doing something very profound at this time. His own people had started to reject him. This is when the word of God and salvation was starting to be opened up to everybody else. But he revealed this to his disciples first. 
by speaking and ministering to this Samaritan woman. See, in 332 BC, Sambalot was then governor of Samaria. Now, under the king of Persia, they all, oh, 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 how I want to say, they all didn't get along with Israel at all. And so now, this San, Sambalet, he partnered with Alexander the Great. And so now, Alexander the Great gave him permission to build a temple like that in Jerusalem on Mount Gizim. And so now he builds this temple and his people, the Samaritans, choose the Pentateuch as their Bible, the first five books of the Bible. And so now there becomes a contention between the Jews and the Samaritans on where to worship because the Jews worshiped on Mount Moriah or in Jerusalem while <laughs> the uh, Samaritans on Mount Gershom. And so now we got a problem. Because now what's happening is that the Samaritans had established a rival place of worship. Uh, that, uh, uh, and so, so that became a point of contention between both groups. And so now uh, uh, Jesus says in verse 23, but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. Now it looks like what we're starting to see here is where Jesus is starting to open up and offer the gift of eternal life to people outside the Jewish race. And again, the reason why is because the Jews were rejecting him in a massive way. And so now, now think about it. He's showing it to his disciples first. Those are the ones who are there to witness this type of thing. The message Bible says of that verse 23, but the time is coming. It has in fact come when what you're called will not matter and where you go to worship will not matter. It's who you are and the way you live that counts before God. Your worship must engage your spirit in the pursuit of truth. That's the kind of people that the Father is out looking for, those who are simply and honestly themselves before him in their worship. So God is saying, I'm opening this saying up for the Gentiles to give their lives to the Lord and serve us. Now you gotta understand, then the temple's in you or the church is in you. So <laughs> when you're not in church, you can worship him on your job. You can worship him uh, in your homes. You can worship him wherever you are. Just be real, just be real. So verse 24 says, God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So now, there is a place in worship where God wants us to go that's based on our relationship and fellowship with him as we walk in the spirit, not fulfilling the lust of the flesh. That if I spend more time with God, the more I'll be, how, how I want to say this, the more I'll be drawn and have a desire to worship him. Okay, now. I want you to go to Colossians chapter one, verse nine, because we have a responsibility to graduate in our worship. It cannot stay the same. Not if you really know Jesus, not if you really know the world, Lord, your worship cannot say, stay the same. It has to change, it has to grow. You're, we grow from faith to faith, from glory to glory. One of the things that we're dealing with when we talk about from glory to glory is your worship experience. It has to grow. Even in the church, it has to grow. And most of us, most of us have gotten down to a routine that has basically pushed the Holy Spirit out in favor of programs, in favor of a written way of doing things. We've kind of just pushed God out. But what if, what if we allowed the Holy Spirit just have his way? Now he's gonna do things decently in order, but we gotta learn to let him have his way. And part of that is 
when there's a work that's going on in us that is pushing us to another level of worship. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you be, uh, may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual, <clears throat> in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Verse 10 that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Verse 11, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all, pa for all patience and long suffering with joy. Next verse, or last verse. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. In those verses, what I picked up is that there's another level that God wants to get us to, not just in our praise, but also in our worship, not just in our walk with him, but in our talk with him, not just with our, our, our prayers, but in answer prayer, it seems to me that God is trying to take us or wants to take you to another level. And that also ascribes to the point that God wants us to graduate in our worship. He wants us to go to that next level. Amen. Now, listen to this very carefully. Graduating or graduate or the graduation defined is the act of moving from one level to a higher level completing all the necessary requirements to advance. You will never graduate from anything without purposeful effort. So now in order to graduate or get to the graduating class of true worshipers, it's going to take some work. It's going to take some work because one of the things you're going to do is beat down how you think, beat down your flesh, and allow God then to minister to you, learn to hear his voice, and let him minister to you about what he wants done in order to enter into his presence. One of the most powerful things that I learned about the Azusa Street Revival was the fact that these people had learned and gotten and developed an art form or a pattern, or they uh, enhanced the principles of getting into God's presence. So much so, God said, I got to do something for them. And that's what you want, okay? That's what you want. Praise the Lord. Now, since we're talking about intensified worship, how do I define the word worship? Worship defined is to express with the totality of your being a reference, a respect, and awe of God. I'm going to say it again. A reverence, a respect, and an awe of God. A-W-E of God which raises above or rises above the respect that I am willing to give any other. In other words, I got God on a level that's so high, everybody else, you know, no, no pun intended, but everybody else falls below that. And everything else falls below that. That's what true worship is. So, I, see, I want to say this. I, I was going to save this. So now, if I'm on praise and worship, and somebody misses a note over here, that's not time for me to look at them and pull myself out of his presence. Okay. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, <laughs> see, God ministers to us in magnificent ways. I'm looking for something. I don't have it. If I'm singing, and while I'm singing, I'm fan. I just took their eyes off him, and now their eyes are on me. So I got to get to the point where I realize that if I'm spending time in God's presence, I want everything to be targeted to him, not me. Not me. Say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now this is going to be about, about two to four part series, so get ready. Buckle up. 
Praise the Lord, because some of you may not like some of the things I'm going to say, but like I said earlier in my prayer, I'm led by the Lord to say them. Amen. So now, this kind of attitude of reverence, respect, and all, where I raise my respect for God above my respect for anybody else, is the kind of attitude in worship that will trigger the supernatural power of God in the church. It triggers it. Okay, y'all still with me? Now, there are some requirements to graduate in worship. Worship cannot be a traditional thing. Worship cannot be a programmed thing in a sense that I wait <laughs> to get to a place where a program allows me to before I start to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. So now, Psalms chapter 29, verse 1 through 2. Psalms chapter 29, verse 2 one through two. So I got to understand how important this worship moment is. It is not nothing to be played with. I worship God, hallelujah, in my prayers. I worship God in my giving. Hallelujah. I worship God at every interval in my life on a daily basis. The more I worship him, the closer we get. We're walking in the spirit now. We're spirit sensitive to God. Hallelujah. When I'm walking and worshiping God, God correctly, he will correct me on a whole lot of things. Because there are a lot of people that are doing things and they think that's God. Well, I, I challenge you to get in, start worshiping the Lord because worshiping the Lord will open you up. And then God will minister you by what you need to be doing as opposed to what you feel like you need to do or want to do. All right, all right. It says in verse one, ascribe or give. Another word for the, uh, give is ascribe. It says ascribe unto the Lord or give unto the Lord. <laughs> oh, you mighty ones. Now, when it talks about the mighty ones, it's talking about men and women of power and high rank. And the fact that those are the ones that are true worshipers. Men and women of high rank. High rank, what do you mean high rank? Well, I'm just basically talking about those who are in the presence of God and realize that it's going to take his presence to accomplish anything in the earth realm. Hallelujah. They can't do it under their own power. They can't do it under, under, under their own control. They realize that to worship God, is to give him the mantle in our lives by recognizing who he is as opposed to what we are, who, as opposed to what we can do without him or what we are and what we can do without him. It says, again, ascribe unto the Lord or give unto the Lord, O you mighty ones. The second verse says, ascribe unto the Lord or give unto the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty, in the beauty reverence, or in a bowed down position of holiness. Mm. Now, that doesn't mean I have to hit my knees, but it does mean I should be on my knees in my heart. And now, if I'm not, then I need to practice that until I am. Hallelujah. And then when I'm led to do it in the church, I won't feel embarrassed because I'll be doing what I've been doing all alone. And now my outer actions reflect my inner self. Oh boy, hallelujah. Psalms chapter 96, verse eight through nine, basically says the same thing. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Now listen to this though. It says, bring an offering and come into his courts. Okay, hallelujah. The enemy works overtime with it. Thank you for bringing it up. The enemy works overtime to try to mess with your worship. If he can't get you in the worship moment in the church, hallelujah, even those who are participating in it, if he can't distract you some way, what he'll do is he'll start messing with you when offering comes. Start messing with you then. Okay, because now you feel like he's messing with your pocketbook. Keep the verse up there for a moment for me. Yeah, he, yeah, he thinks he's messing with your pocketbook. And the, and the pastor, all they want is some money. No, what we're trying to do is get something into your hands 
We're trying to teach you so that you can live above your circumstances and see God move in a magnificent way in your life. Hallelujah. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. But now it all starts with how you give. What's your motive? It says, give to the Lord the glory do his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Verse 9. Y'all still with me? Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. We got to reverence him. We reverence him in our giving also, people. And I don't think we've been, you know, we've done a, a decent job of it. But how many of y'all can attest to the fact that you're giving and you're still expecting something from God and it hasn't shown up? It may be because while you're giving, you're not worshiping him when you do it. You're not reverencing him. You're not, you're not bowing the knee, if not physically, but in your heart. All right, praise the Lord. See, listen to this very carefully. I need a revelation of having a regenerated spirit. I need that you can take that down. I, I, I need to get a revelation of the fact that I'm not what I used to be. So a lot of the things I thought in the way that I used to be are invalid the way I am now. Have nothing to do with the way I am now and I need to start attacking those things that rob me of the best that God has for me. Hallelujah. So now, I need a revelation of having a regenerated spirit. Look, if I talk too much before, <laughs> before my spirit was, was regenerated, I got to work at not talking so much after. If I'm hurting people's feelings all the time before I get a revelation of, I got, of the fact that I got a regenerated spirit, then I got to deal with that on this end. <laughs> Amen. If I'm stingy before I have a regenerated spirit, I got to work on being more liberal after. I, that regenerated spirit has become a revelation for me. I'm not what I used to be. I want you to repeat that. I'm not what I used to be. But it will never happen unless you purposely do it in and of yourself. Amen. Now, I need a revelation for stewardship. That's right. I need a revelation for stewardship. That my job is to help the body of Christ, the kingdom of God, to help establish his kingdom in the earth. That's in Deuteronomy. We give because it helps to establish his kingdom in the earth. Okay. Now remember the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of the sum total of our talking. We talk too much and the devil sits back. He cannot make you do anything. He sits back and he listens to you attentively, attentively and he waits for you to say something contrary to the word. That's why I've always said your opinions don't matter if it's not God. Now you can have them, praise the Lord. But now, if it affects what God is doing in your life, you need to shut that down. Amen. How we talk about and to other people are, a, <laughs> are, are, are critical to what God wants to do in and for our lives. You want to rob yourself of God's best? Keep talking about other folk, critical of other folk. It seems like they can't do nothing right. You're always looking for the wrong thing to do, that they've done and not magnify what God is doing in their lives. Keep it up. Keep it up. But if I'm in true worship, these things change. See, I need a revelation of who God is and his sovereignty. I need a revelation of who he is. And most people that are kind of drifting off, they forgot who he is. 
How do you forget if you had a revelation? You do. But that's because what you're dealing with starts shooting you, you the truths that are outside of God's. The dis, how I want to say this, the untruths that are outside of God's word. And the untruth, you start hearing more of that than you are diligent and committed to the word of God. It changes how you think. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, scriptures proves that worship is the key to supernatural intervention from God. That if I learn to get to this graduating class of worship, that I'll see a move of God supernaturally like never before, not just in the corporate setting in the church, but in my personal life. And listen to me very carefully. Most of these supernatural interventions will start in you first. He always works from the inside out because if you twist it in some area, you may need that supernatural intervention to change you first before he changes what goes on outside you. So now you need to understand how God works from the inside out. So now, so this supernatural intervention comes especially when I need a response from him. Sometimes you're waiting on God to tell you what to do. I need a response from you, Lord. Hallelujah. These, this supernatural intervention that comes from God, now, is, now these are a product of my worship. When I worship God, I know that, hallelujah, if I do it the right way, his way, I know that I'll have or get a response from him in whatever matter or thing that I'm working on. When I worship him, and understand that worship is the key to supernatural intervention, I'll always get a refreshing from God. A refreshing from God. Everybody say refreshing from God. I'll get to the point, Facebook crowd said, a refreshing from the Lord because I have to be refreshed. There's nothing like being refreshed in your body. It gives you new, new energy. It, it makes you more alert. I need or you need a refreshing. Worship is the key to a refreshing that you need from the Lord. Hallelujah. A lot of times it ain't about getting away. It's about getting in God's presence and worshiping him. <laughs> Scripture proves that worship is the key to supernatural intervention from God. Number three, <laughs> when I need a life-changing revelation, Huh. While in worship, I can get that. Now think about it. The more you think about it, the more you'll see how the enemy works at trying to mess with your worship. Okay? Last but not least, huh. worship is the key to supernatural intervention from God. Listen to this. Because it gives me a rescue when I need it from perishable predicaments. It'll give me a rescue I need from perishable predicaments. Well, what, well, Pastor, well, see, there are times where the issues in your life become so, so huge, so out of pocket, so surprising, so tumultuous, that a lot of times what we do is that we start doing everything and putting all our energy into the problem if we forget about the problem solver. Y'all see what I'm saying? Uh, we did it with, not, not me, but we did it with COVID-19. We took that too far. We did. We took it way too far. Okay. We isolated ourselves, which we should have for that moment, you know, but now we isolated our hearts. We isolated who we were in Christ. And we started looking at the conditions around us. Some of y'all, every time the body count went up, you knew about it. You knew about it. But did you take any time, or did we as a whole take any time to just lift up the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. Magnify his name. Glorify his name. Call in Jehovah Rapha the Lord that healeth thee. Did we ever do that? 
Hmm? And in worship, now remember, in worship, I get a response from God. See, a lot of us stayed away. Even when the churches start coming together again, we kind of stayed away. Now think about it. And we're not thinking about this in, in God's terms, about what he thinks about what we're doing. We flying everywhere. We going to stuff, premieres or whatever's out there. But we, but we feel like it is a safety hazard to go to church. Now who's telling you that? Who's really telling you that? Now think, I'm not trying to get on anybody, but this is just what I've seen. I've been here since day one in March, last March. Didn't get nothing. Nothing, no COVID-19, no nothing. I took the vaccines and I took the booster too. In the, in the public service notes, you ought to do the same. All that mess about there being a something in it and all that kind of stuff is really a trick of the enemy. Can't you see what he's doing? He's killing, stealing, and destroying. Okay, but the only difference with this vaccine is that it became political. First one ever, it became political. It became political, and you can't shake it. You need God's word on that. You do. Not all that other stuff. You need God's word on, my, on that. I'm, I'm going to leave that alone. Praise the Lord. Leave it alone, Pastor. Now, to graduate in worship means I have overcome all the hindrances to quit or give up my set place to focus on his mercy and his grace. I've given all that up. So if I'm up here standing by myself, I'm going to do it. You can do what you want to do, but if I'm up here singing by myself, if I have to, I'm going to do it. You can let all these other distractions get you out of whack with God. I'm going to stick to God's set place for my life. <laughs> oh, boy. See, the devil has really bamboozled a whole lot of folk. And, you, and the sad thing is, you still ain't got it. You still ain't getting it. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. See, so to graduate in worship means to the next level, a true worshiper means I have overcome all the hindrances to quit or give up my set place and focus on his mercy and his grace. And he is the reason why I do what I do, not you. See, I refuse to be at my set place and not in my set place. I choose to worship him. I can be at my set place, the church, but not in my set place, in the church, which makes it easier to leave because then I can blame the church and not me. It's easier to do. Hmm? That's all, oh Lord, I don't know if I want to say this. No, I'm going to say it because I pray for the boldness. That's why if you visit another church, when a pastor's looking for members, he'll tell you, he'll call you out. he say, the Lord said. Lord ain't said nothing. The Lord said, you have gifts and talents that can be used. Now, your beacon goes up. This is why I've been trying to tell my man of God for years. Yes, yes, yes. And if you come over here, or if somebody else kind of convince you to, you can use those gifts and talents. Okay, that's not God, that's recruitment. But it's not God, but it is recruitment. Now I don't fault anybody for doing it, but it's not God, it's not loyal, it's not integrity, not spiritual integrity. <laughs> oh boy, hallelujah. True worship will help me to see myself. This one here I can't say. The Lord ain't released me to say that one. See, my pathway to higher worship must go, listen to this. Oh, write it down. In fact, some of y'all can tag it, put it on the screen. Listen to this. Your pathway to higher worship must go from entertainment to encounter. It has to go from entertainment to encounters. 
It has to be an encounter with him and get past entertainment. Because if it's entertainment alone, you'll never connect with God, you'll never really connect with the people. Now you'll be doing your thing, but it will never really connect with the people it needs to connect to because it's entertainment. Entertainment. And it's something you can remember, but it has with it no spiritual enrichment for elevation in your life. You know, I remember when I was in high school, don't y'all, don't y'all mess with me on this. We went down to Michigan State. One of our high school trips was go down to Michigan State and we saw the temptations, the original temptations. The only one that was missing was David Ruffin. And uh, I had a seat on the third or fourth row in the center in this big old auditorium. Man, I thought, oh, man. Oh, because see, I had all their records, all their albums. Albums and records is what came out before CDs and MP3 stuff, okay? And so, so, so I had all their stuff. And man, they were doing them, you know, and they real smooth with their steps and they were doing their thing. Man, I was in, I was in heaven. Now, the, the group that came up before, and most of y'all don't remember this, but it was the 103rd Street Watts Rhythm Band. And so I'm sitting there and I, oh man, I'm in heaven. Okay, had no spiritual significance in my life whatsoever. And it was a moment of entertainment, but there was no encounter with him. That's why it's a memory, but it's still not worth an encounter with him. Doesn't even come near it. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. See, so, my, your pathway to higher worship, to graduating from, to be a true worshiper must go through entertainment to encounter. I need that encounter with him. Amen? Praise God. So it is our corporate responsibility also to train the next generation of true worshipers. See, that's one thing I don't understand about the body. Okay, okay, okay. Y'all raise your hands to a pastor. Hallelujah. <laughs> We're supposed to be training the next generation. They get to the point where they trust us. They get to the point where we're teaching and tr they're trusting us. Then we quit on them. And a lot of them will come to me and say, why, why? We liked them. Why did they quit? Because, see, <sighs> hallelujah, to graduate in worship means I have overcome all hindrances to quit or give up my set place and focus on his mercy and his grace. Hmm. Okay, 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 okay. Hallelujah. So if Pastor Ryan got him just say, I'm through, I quit, I'm quit. I'm tired of people 101, I quit right now. Now it may satisfy me for a season, but then I'll see the fruit of what I did in the lives of those who had touched the most that didn't say nothing about it when I was touching their lives, but I had such an impact on their lives when I stayed in my set place. Worship. Oh, we got to get back to worship, y'all. Now, the power of intensified worship is where we're going to sit. Real, all I did was set a foundation. The power of intensified work, per, uh, worship. It is the will of God to take your worship to another level, both individually and corporately, unless we are motivated to do so, surpassing, listen to this, unless we are motivated to do so, surpassing our emotional deficits and hang ups. Okay. Now, in other words, now if I'm not ready to surpass my motivations that are wrong and my emotional deficits and hang ups, then this lesson will merely be just a good one that will be soon forgotten. Intensifying your worship is an intentional act triggered by my life's situational realities. 
My <laughs> worship has to be for real. So I got to get to the point where it becomes real to me. Hmm. So why is it that God is calling for this intense worship? You know what? Brother Seymour at Azusa got to the point where he would stay in prayer nine, ten hours a day. He would worship God and pray nine, ten, praise, worship, and pray nine, ten hours a day. Well, I can't do that. I'm working. I didn't ask you to do it. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm not even suggesting that you do that. All I'm doing is trying to show you the importance of it. That's all. So why intensified worship? Romans chapter 15 verse 4 says this. I want it in the Amplified. Uh, Romans chapter 15 verse 4. So now, unless I'm willing to attack my person the way I feel. See, this comes, see, <laughs> how I want to say this. I can do it when I got a revelation of the regenerated spirit in me. If I don't have a revelation of that, I'm going to keep doing the same things I've been doing all along. If I don't like what you're doing, I'm through. You can't do that anymore. Look, we're in a hybrid church now. The church is reaching more people than they would put in the pews on Sunday. The Sunday school is reaching more people than we put in the pews or in the classrooms on Sunday. It's become a hybrid church, not just mine, but all of them. Okay, 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 okay. Jesus is Lord, am I right? I said Jesus is Lord, amen. Now, Romans chapter 15, verse four. It says, for whatever was written in early times was written for our instruction so that through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope and overflow with confidence in his promises. Now, there, and I'm going to close with this because my time is up. There were moments when the approach to the worship experience for the people of God was a, of greater emphasis and focus. We need to know the truths that move God's people to another level so that our worship will be more intensified. You got it? All right, all right, all right. Now, we're talking about again, worship. Now I'm giving you the definition for worship. I'm giving you the definition for graduate, graduating. Now I'm gonna give you a, re, a, a definition for intensify. The word intensify means to elevate, to heighten, to intentionally increase using more effort than normal. Mm. Wow. To elevate, heighten, to intentionally increase using more effort than normal. The revelation from intensified worship is something I got to have. I'm gonna give you one today, then we're gonna, then we're gonna close it out. Abraham, everybody say Abraham. Abraham obeyed God's directive to go worship in an intensified way. Genesis chapter 22, verse five. Huh? Genesis chapter 22, verse five. In fact, let's go there. I'm gonna close it with this, but I want you to see it. Genesis chapter 22, verse five. 22, Genesis chapter 22, verse 5. It says, and, the, and Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey, the lad, my son, Isaac, and I will go yonder and worship. And we, not me, but we will come back to you now. Remember, at this time, God has told Abraham to sacrifice his only son. As a preliminary example, of him having to bring his own son here for the sacrifice of all mankind. He just, God was looking for somebody's permission to do it. He used Abraham. Hallelujah. But he had never intended 
on, on, on taking Abraham's son. He was trying to see if Abraham would obey him. Abraham said, we're going to, me and my son are going up to worship. Me and I, my son are coming back. You got to get a revelation of this. So now, I'm going to hit you with some points here that you need to study. It is critical to live and walk in the spirit to acquire the supernatural grace to hear the voice of God. Because if you read the whole story, when, when Abraham had tied him down and raised the knife, God spoke. He said, you don't have to do that. Now I know that I got the pathway to bring my own son here to relieve man of sin. Number two, I found out in reading this story that intensified worship requires faith. Yeah, he said, me and my son are going up to worship God. Me and my son are coming back. What an awesome testimony of faith. He said, intensified, I said again, intensified worship requires faith. Hallelujah. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by what? The word of God. Faith does not come by having heard. So my mindset is when pastor says Hebrew chapter 1, 11 verse 1, that I have heard it, then faith can't come to me with the revelation I need to deal with my present circumstances. <laughs> I have to be able to switch gears. That's why I can't get with nobody saying, well, he's preaching the same thing over and over. That's right. Mm -hmm. In a sense. Because I usually do a 10, 15 minute review up front. If that's what you're talking about, fine. But see, if you turn off in that time, you don't get nothing else I'm saying. Because that's all new and refreshed revelation. Like this is. Hallelujah. Now, intensified worship requires obedience to God. Yeah. <laughs> Abraham did it. How many of us would have? Intensified worship requires a confession in line with the word. Me and my son are going up. Me and our son are coming back. But we're going up to worship. We're going to that next level. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Intensified worship requires the tools necessary to enter for a proper sacrifice. We said, we read a verse earlier <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that worship him and bring an offering. Bring an offering. Ah, now that offering require, is, is a lot more and I don't have time to go into that. Not right now. Intensified worship requires an expectation that matches the finished word of your faith. Hallelujah. Because God is your reward. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Say praise the Lord again. Uh, I'll close with this. A story. It's a short one. Uh, this man went to the hospital to see his daughter. His daughter was a, uh, one, two years old. And uh, uh, he was go she was going through some things. The mother was quite upset at what was going on in the young girl's life. And uh, they were trusting God, and they were trusting God for the best to be uh, manifested in the life of their daughter. Oh, man. So they were believing God would take away the pain. But it wasn't going away. Hallelujah. Well, he goes up to her, they go up to her room one day and she's not in there. They've taken her down to a section of the, of the hospital where other young kids were. Now this girl's not one or two, but two or three years old. They got her in a, a playpen like. And the mother stayed in the room. She's disgusted with her husband because it doesn't seem like nothing's working that they're doing. And so now, what's... <laughs> What he does, he leaves her in the room. She's fussing, she's upset, she's angry, she's crying. And uh, he goes down to where his daughter is. And what he does is awesome. 
He gets into the crib with her and sits down. Now listen this very carefully. She gets into the, he gets into the, the, the crib with her and sits down. The girl calms down. Pain's still there, but the girl calms down. Now her mother wonders what's taking so long, so she goes down to that second floor where her daughter is, now her husband. And she looks into the room and she sees them playing and he's sitting in the crib with her. You know, that playpen, he's sitting in there with her. And she's playing and she's enjoying herself. The pain hasn't subsided, but now she feels like she's got somebody there to see her through it. And that alone heightened the spirits of that little girl. See, sometimes God, this is very careful, sometimes God can't do nothing about what you're dealing with because, let's face it, if, if you mess up and you get pregnant, you're going to have a baby nine months later. But now what he'll do is that he'll get right down there with you. This is what worship does. He'll get right down there with you and he'll see you through it. Meditate on that. And Wednesday night, we're going to come back and talk more about the power of intensified purpose, something that we should be, hallelujah, doing, and some of us are not. Jesus is Lord. Let's bow our heads. Amen. Hopefully you got something out of that. Hallelujah. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're here today and you do not know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, we dare not leave here today without at least extending that invitation to you. God says in his word, as we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in our heart that God is raising from the dead, we shall be saved. For all of you listening today that do not know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, this is your time to commit your life to him. This is your time to get on the cutting edge of what God is doing in these last days. This is your time, hallelujah, to be redeemed from the curse of the law, spiritual death, spiritual death sickness and disease, and poverty. This is your time to fulfill your potential in life in a monumental way, hallelujah, with a resiliency to always stay on top. It takes God. So every head body, very close. If you're here today, you'd like to make Jesus Lord of your life. I want you to repeat this prayer after me, hallelujah. We're going to say the prayer of salvation that comes from Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 10. It says, if you confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in our heart that God is raising from the dead, we shall be saved. So I'd like you to raise your hands to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to repeat this after me. Say, Father, in the precious name of Jesus, I thank you for giving me your son who died and rose again the third day for me. I receive Jesus now as my personal Lord and Savior. I thank you, Lord, for coming into my life. And Lord, I thank you that now I'm ready. After I'm saved, and now I'm ready to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit. And I receive him now in Jesus' name. And I thank you for it in the mighty name of Jesus. So Lord, now, I thank and praise you that I'm saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, and ready to serve you in Jesus' name. Now, if you made that confession, you're now in the kingdom of God. Give God a praise for it. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, as you see our screen on the on the on the on the on, the, on your on whatever your device is, now. If you receive salvation, we want to know about it. So what I ask you to do is send your information to NCCC, uh, text NCCC to 71441 and send us your information. Let us know that you gave your life to the Lord. Let us know that you're starting and embarking on a journey that's totally awesome and rewarding in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So that's what you do. You hit that first bullet after you text NCCC to 71441 and then let us know about the decision to make Jesus Lord of your life that you made today or whenever you hear this broadcast. Then secondly, if you'd like to become a member of New Covenant Christian Center, we have members now, I think it's 40 plus now in the name of Jesus. And it's all because 
we're a hybrid church now. And so now, uh, if, you, if you'd like to become a member of New Covenant Christian Center, or you have become an online member of New Covenant Christian Center, send us your information. Send it to NCCC, to, text NCCC to 71441. Send us your information, and we'll send you the book, the vision book that we have here for New Covenant Christian Center. We're a church that loves like none other. We're building people of principle, prayer, power, praise, and purpose. When we come to New Covenant, we find family, faith, forgiveness, and fulfillment. This is your church home, whether you live in another state or not. Now, you need to find somewhere to go there in Jesus' name. But stay connected with us, hallelujah, and get that, 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 how I want to say that. Uh, get the dessert you need, hallelujah, to satisfy your life in Christ. So, last but not least, if you just need prayer, send us your information, your name and your address and your prayer request. And what we're going to do is that we're going to give it to elders and they will pray for you. Hallelujah. And we, we believe God for supernatural intervention and in whatever issue you got going on in your life. And we thank God for answered prayer in your life. So then you'll take, of course, you all, again, we text NCC, uh, NCCC to 71441 to, uh, to uh, let us know of your request, whether or not you've given your life to the Lord, if you want to be a member of New Covenant, or you just need prayer. Well, praise God. We walk by faith, not by sight, no matter what. This is our year of Jubilee. This is our decade of Jubilee. As we catch the fire for the coming revival that God is doing with the Azusa Street experience. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Have a blessed day in Christ Jesus. Amen.